Hello there, Irv Shapiro, aka Dr. Vax here. Today we're going to start a very exciting journey. On this journey, we're going to go from knowing basically nothing about 3D printing to hopefully becoming experts together. To get started in 3D printing, first we need a printer. And the printer I've selected to use as our vehicle for our journey is the Prusa, original Prusa, I3 MK3. Now let's talk about some of the characteristics of this printer. This is a printer that takes thermoplastic filaments, it melts them, and lays them down in layers in order to build up 3D objects. Some of the characteristics of this printer right from the website, and I'll put this information up on the screen for you, is that it can print a object that's almost 10 inches by eight and a half by eight and a half inches, which would be about 25 centimeters by 21 by 21 centimeters. It has an integrated LCD to control the printer. You can print directly from designs that have been prepared via a slicer. A slicer is a piece of software that takes a 3D model and divides it into individual layers. Think about 3D printing almost like building via bricks. You lay one layer of bricks down at a time. The architect has to design how the bricks are configured. The slicer does that for a 3D printer. It uses a 0.4 millimeter nozzle to lay down each layer. It can have a minimum layer height of 0.05 millimeters. It automatically levels the bed. The bed is the area you're printing on, and if that's not level, then your print will have difficulties. It automatically levels the bed, and it prints in a wide range of materials from PLA, which is a biodegradable plastic, to ABS, which is a plastic you see every day. It's basically what Lego is made out of, to PET or HIPS or Flex or Ninja Flex, nylon, a wide range of filaments. Okay, we're about three, three and a half hours into the build. It's actually the next day. Uh, life interrupted uh, the build process, which is to be expected. And I've completed the majority of the frame. I'd like to walk through what I've done already with you. What we can see here is that we have the X, Y, and Z axis completed. We have all of the belts in place, all of the um, Z axis leveling rods in place. And I would have to say this was a bit more complicated than I expected. The complication was not following the instructions. They're absolutely excellent. Um, I did make one ma mistake. There are little covers on the printer, on the printer motors here, on the Z axis motors here, stepper motors here. Um, when I got done assembling this piece here, I looked at the plastic bag and there were two parts left. We've all seen that happen. I panicked for a minute. I Googled it. I decided those parts are important. They ensure that, um, dirt and dust and print material doesn't get into the motors. Fortunately, by uh, removing these two supports, um, I was able to very easily lift off this um, mechanism, put those in place, and put this back on. So it wasn't a difficult fix. What took the most time, however, was at various places um, throughout this printer, there are little pockets, they call them traps in the user's manual, in the instruction manual, where you insert a nut. Getting the nuts into those traps was very difficult. These nuts are very small. Uh, a print, the print head on this printer, the standard print head is 0.4 millimeters. So um, the tolerances are not that tight and it was often difficult to get those in. I did find because of that, and for other reasons, I needed a couple extra tools. One, I needed an X-Acto knife, just to clean out the pockets. I needed a small screwdriver at times to help both clean out the pocket and poke the nut in. I did find that using from my Fix-It 
computer kit. Fixit is actually a brand. You can Google it. They produce fantastic kits for repairing computers with specialty tools that using the, um, the Allen wrench uh, adapter for the Fixit tool was much easier than using the um, Allen wrenches that are supplied, the hex wrenches that are supplied. Uh, it just made it easier to insert things. So that's a nice to have, not a must to have. I did find that a socket wrench uh, was useful in uh, tightening a couple of the bolts. Um, and I um, brought out a diagonal wire cutter that I used uh, primarily for cutting off cable ties, which interestingly enough are used as part of the permanent construction of this printer. So at this point, I'm going to continue to assemble the printhead mechanism, uh, attach the electronics. When you see us next, we'll be ready to test this printer. Okay, I'm going to reach behind the printer and power it on, and let's see what happens. The display is displaying original Prusa i3 Prusa research. And I hear the fans going. Hi, I'm your original Prusa i3 printer. Would you like me to guide you? And I'm going to use this control through the setup process. I'm going to press on this control to say yes. I will run XYZ calibration now. It will take approximately 12 minutes. Um, we will speed through this in the video, but let's let me get it started. It's doing what's called auto homing. So it was finding the corner of the platform. It's now calibrating the Z axis. It's determining how high it can go. Is the still sheet on the print bed. I'm going to tell it yes. Please remove the steel sheet from the heat bed. Okay, we'll take that off. These magnets are remarkably strong. Uh, the print bed, the steel sheet is held on with uh, magnets. Now I'm going to press continue. Please clean the nozzle for calibration. Click when done. Um, I've never actually used this nozzle, so I assume it is already clean. Click. Please place a sheet of paper under the nozzle during the calibration of the first four points. If the nozzle catches the paper, power off the printer. So let's uh, take a sheet of paper here, and I'm going to print continue. I guess I have to press that one more time. Searching bed calibration point one of four. So it's moving down very, very slowly. There is a sensor. The sensor in this printer is called the PINDA probe that uh, senses the uh, print bed and uses that to uh, check the print bed. Calibration failed, check the axes and run again. Okay, we're gonna stop the video and see what's going on. Okay, I found what was wrong, and it is continuing with the calibration process. What was wrong is there are two little black washers that go on the Z-axis rods, um, and they were a little bit too tight, and that was keeping the printer from going as far down as it needed to do the calibration. I also rechecked the uh, sensor uh, that is used to sense the uh, bed, the, the PINDA sensor, the Prusa induction auto level leveling probe. I readjusted uh, the height of that probe and now it seems to be going through the calibration process properly. Okay, I'm going to click load filament one more time because it didn't seem like I got enough filament out that time. Other times it's extruded more filament. So I wanna make sure it's in there good. Load filament. There we go. Now it's working properly. Is PLA filament loaded? Yes. It's 
heating the bed to make sure it's correct. It's heating the extruder to make sure it's correct. And it's going to begin the first layer calibration. Adjusting Z. Okay, so at this point I need to look and see if the extrusion looks proper. And it does not on that one. It does here on the center. Looks much better. So it must have been just that outside edge that was having a problem. We'll take a look at this and then we'll actually look at it a little more closely with a magnifying glass to make sure it's correct. Ah, it seems to be skipping around a bit. So something is not right. Okay, now we're going to start our first print. We're going to print a Prusa logo just to get an idea of how well this works. So we're going to click on the controller. We're going to go down to print from SD. We're going to select the third option. It says it takes 19 minutes. We're going to click on that. It says bed is heating. So it's going to heat up the print bed to 60 degrees. It's going to print, heat up the extruder to 215 degrees. And then it's going to start printing. We'll watch this go a little bit. Then we'll stop the video and come back for the results. Okay, here's a bit more printing so you can see some of what's happening. You notice that the movements of the printer are quite different depending on where you are in the print, whether it's doing outside edges or fill. Um, and the print head on this printer can move quite quickly. It's, uh, it's working quite hard now. Seems to be running very, very smoothly. I don't see any slippage of any of the gears. Okay, we've completed our first print. It's actually uh, rather impressive looking. We're going to let it cool off a bit before we attempt to take it off the uh, print surface. Okay, now that I've completed my first print, in fact, I took a bit longer, and in addition to the original Prusa logo, I printed a whistle, which is also on the Prusa SD card, um, and I experimented with some other items I, I downloaded off of Thingiverse, including this rather remarkable articulated butterfly. So here are my observations about starting my journey with the Prusa i3 MK3. Spectacular printer. The quality of these prints exceeds every expectation I have. And this was assembled from a kit. Now in terms of the kit experience, it was brutal. I've built a lot of electronic kits. I've put together computers. I do woodworking. I make pens on a lathe. I'm considered a handy guy. This took me over eight hours from opening the box to until I was able to print the first print. And there were a number of moments of sheer terror when I wasn't sure if potentially I had broken my new $750 printer. So putting it together from a kit was a very, very good experience because I learned all of the intricacies of this printer. But don't do it unless you have time. In general, I would assume if you've never been exposed to 3D printing before, if it's your first time, leave a couple days to get the printer assembled, compare the printed manual and the online manual. The online manual assembly guide has additional photos which are very, very useful. So overall, this though has been a really strong positive first impression. I can highly recommend the Prusa i3 MK3. And be sure to look for other videos on YouTube and on the drvax.com website about my experience in going from a 3D printing novice to, in the future, an experienced 3D maker. Have a good day.